Good morning, afternoon or evening, and welcome to Stray Gods. Let's once again start by looking at our journal, seeing what's new here. We did learn some new things in our previous episode. This is interesting. Calliope visited Aphrodite and Eros the night she died. Calliope was scared of something but wouldn't tell them what it was. Now they regret not pressing her about it more. But it still tells me one thing. Calliope knew something was going to happen to her. Maybe she already knew when she met me at the gymnasium. Maybe she thought she might die and that's why she seemed so... sad, resigned. So, whatever happened that night, it didn't come as a surprise. Yeah, we kind of already knew that. Um, based on the... The song that she sang with us. Um, I guess Aphrodite is throwing some kind of a party. Apollo thinks I should go, since Aphrodite knows everyone who's anyone and might be able to help me. He's being kind of vague about what the party's about, though. Should I be worried? Eros told me all about what Aphrodite went through during the war. How she was kidnapped by the enemy and how she was freed by her husband, Hephaestus, who she never even got to thank or say goodbye to. She's riddled with so much guilt and trauma, and she can't escape any of it. As soon as her memories return, she's in constant agony, even if she hides it pretty well. Even so, he doesn't think what she's doing is the right answer to her problems. It certainly hasn't helped so far. I told Eros that I try to persuade Aphrodite to hold on. Who knows, maybe it's not even possible. I have to try, because this, what she's been doing to cope, this clearly isn't the answer. Apollo said something about Aphrodite which has stuck with me. He says she chooses successors who are kind, generous people, because she thinks that in time, that will make her a better person. Once the song was over, I couldn't do it. I couldn't take away the rest Aphrodite wanted so badly. She's gone now and her Eidolon has passed on to Venus. I don't think she was behind what happened to Calliope, but if she was, then I guess her secrets went with her. And that'll have to be okay. I'll figure it out. Yeah, it was her choice. And, uh... I couldn't help but let her... make the choice and not force her one way or the other. You know, despite all his abs and surfer dude looks, Apollo is just like some grandpa who's never managed to keep up with the times. At least he doesn't shake his cane at all the young whippersnappers passing by his house. Unless he does, how would I know? So, Apollo and I kind of danced after the party, and uh, there was this moment where I thought, are we going to kiss? Did I want it to happen? Is he interested in me in that way? Could I be dating a Greek god? 
this is so weird. I mean, Apollo kind of has a reputation, as Freddy told us, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if he was interested in, um, in Grace in that kind of way. Athena. Nothing new there. I don't think there's anything new here either, no. And, uh, Pan. Ah, this is interesting. I thought Apollo and Persephone had kind of dismissed the idea of Pan being a suspect when we were all together, but Apollo suggested that Pan's a schemer and we shouldn't completely disregard the idea. Pan certainly does seem like the kind of idol who could be involved in nefarious deeds, I guess. Yeah, he could be involved, somehow. I met Eros later on at Aphrodite's party and suddenly his dark mood makes sense. It seems that he's Aphrodite's constant caretaker. He's watched her throw these parties and die over and over and I think he's finally reached his limit. He can't stand Aphrodite's pain, but I think he doesn't know what to do about it. He's hoping I can convince her to stop, which is a tall order for sure, and I don't know that it would actually make her better. Apollo said he thinks Eros has stayed with Aphrodite all this time because he feels like he owes her. Once upon a time it was Eros who was the eternal disaster, Apollo's words, and she was the caregiver, so now he must return the favor no matter how it turns, no matter how it hurts his soul. I think Apollo's probably right. In the end, I couldn't do what Eros asked. I couldn't take that choice away from Aphrodite. I think he understood and I guess he didn't have an alternative to offer anyhow. But it was still hard to watch him sink in on himself when it was all over. I hope he and Venus will be alright. Talking to Venus and Eros after the party, they were more or, le they more or less corroborated part of what Asterion told me. Calliope went to the reliquary that night. She knew something big was going down and she was really frightened. They also agreed Medusa if anyone would know more, so I guess she's next on my list. I met the person who's supposed to become the new Aphrodite. Her name's Venus and she seems really sweet. Aphrodite's been preparing her for months. Must be nice. And she seems to know what she's getting into. But does that make it okay? In the end, I let Aphrodite go through with the ritual. She deserved mercy just like Apollo and Venus said. So now Venus is her, just without her memories. At least for a while, as they both intended. I hope I did the right thing. I mean, it wasn't really for us to decide. It was Aphrodite's choice. Let's go talk to Apollo, and then go see Medusa. Huh. 
Hello again. I can't remember the last time I had guests so frequently. I did tell you we could discuss your memories and the Eidolon more in depth after the party. Uh, did you have any questions, or...? Um... How many times have you died? Can I ask that? Well, we call it passing on, meaning the Eidolon, and it's fine. I've passed on 12 times that I can recall. So your name isn't really Apollo? Most recently it was Lucas. Everyone Lucas ever knew is gone, however, so these days I prefer Apollo again. Lucas? <laughs> Seems weird to think of you as a Lucas. <laughs> it was weird for him, too. Much like yourself, Lucas becoming Apollo was somewhat of a surprise. Sounds like there's a story there. Um... Tell me about this Lucas. How did he become you? Or is it how you became Apollo? Apollo had taken to surfing. He left the city without permission and roamed the coast looking for... Well, I'm not sure now. Whatever it was, he found it one night when a giant wave took him down. He was drowning, and he thought... I thought... This is finally it. But it wasn't. Lucas saw Apollo struggling and swam out to save him. He pulled us ashore, but it was too late. It took a long time to realize what happened. I didn't return to the city until years later. By then, everyone thought I was Apollo's chosen successor. So no trial for you, huh? It wasn't easy at first, without memories or anyone to guide me, but... No. Nothing like that. Mm. When all these memories start to return, will I feel different? Well, let's see. It starts as dreams you'll have of places you've never been, people you've never met. Fleeting images, feelings. Then they'll appear while you're awake. You'll be eating breakfast and suddenly recall when you last ate something similar in the 17th century. The only difficult part is that eventually it can be hard to differentiate between your life and all those other lives. They blend together. That does sound confusing. <laughs> A little, yeah. And not all the memories will be good ones. It can take time to process. You said it becomes hard to differentiate your life from the others. How hard, exactly? It'll still be me, right? Grace, would you say that who you are is at least in part due to your experiences? I guess so, sure. Well, you'll have a lot more experiences. They won't feel like someone else's either. It will feel like you did all those things. They will shape who you are now, just as they shaped Calliope and all those who came before her. The good news is, you won't get all the memories. Each time we pass on, the older memories fade. Oh, so like, eventually then, as Aphrodite passes on, the, m the painful memories will fade? I mean... <laughs> That's the answer, isn't it, to how is fading memories a good thing, but, uh, sure. Let's ask. We kind of already know, though, because of Aphrodite. Wait, how is it good that old memories start to fade? We're many thousands of years old, Grace. If all of those memories returned with perfect clarity, you'd... <laughs> you'd drown in them. Yeah, but doesn't that mean you've all forgotten so much? Tell me, how much do you remember from when you were a small child? Bits and pieces, I guess. Not much. It's the same for us. The further I try to think back, the more blurry it becomes. I remember the important bits, but little else. Some of the really old memories. <laughs> There's so many mortal stories that get mixed up with them. Things my previous selves learned as legends. 
becomes hard to tell. It takes time, Brace. You'll remember all the lies you've led, but at a pace you can handle, and nothing more. Wait, what would have happened if Lucas hadn't tried to rescue you? What if no one was there when you... When I died? Uh, then the Eidolon of Apollo's line would have ended forever, I think. You think? <laughs> there have been stories about Eidolons that survive for a time and go wandering. That's probably all they are, though. Stories. It's not something we've had much opportunity to study, but normally... Death without passing on is... is how an idol really dies. Forever. It's a lot to consider. Assuming I'll even have time to worry about it, what with the trial coming. Hopefully this eases whatever concerns you might have had. Anything else you'd like to discuss while you're here? Ooh. Hmm. I'd like to know a little more about you. All I know is you live in a dump, you have an oracle, and you... I'm not sure what to tell you. One day has bled into the next for so long, I feel like I've been lost in the spaces in between. Wow, that's a bit dramatic. Yeah, well, it comes naturally. Music and the arts were once under my purview as a god. How did that get decided? Did you have a big hat full of pieces of paper and you all picked at random? No, we chose them for ourselves. Some, at least. Others were given to us by our priests. We collected godly responsibilities like marbles. People collect marbles? Oh, um, or, uh, whatever it is mortals collect these days. Cars, perhaps? The point is, we took our godly duties very seriously. You must have been very different back when you were a proper god. I think most of us were. We saw ourselves as, I don't know, teachers. Mortals were our students, and we guided them to enlightenment. We thought we were special, infallible. I was as magnificent as the sun, and I surrounded myself with those who basked in my radiance. That doesn't sound like you. <laughs> yeah. I was arrogant. If there was a man or woman I desired, then I had to have them, or there would be consequences. You wouldn't have liked me. I wouldn't have liked me. Hmm. So what is Persephone's beef with you, exactly? Is it just about what Hades did to her? That's no small thing. It seems more personal than that. I mentioned how Persephone's kidnapping almost meant war between Olympus and Hades, yes? Well, while this was all going on, Persephone managed to escape the underworld, and... I'm the one she encountered first. Uh-oh. Hades was hot on her heels. And I had a choice. Either do battle with Hades and start the war right then and there, or... Let him take her back. Zeus would have had my head if I had sparked a war. Yet all I still think of are Persephone's eyes as Hades smugly took back his prisoner. It's not my finest moment. Apollo, have you ever tried... I don't know, talking to someone about how you feel? I will never understand this modern fascination with therapy and focusing on one's feelings. It might help. You never know. Yes, I've tried it. There was one I used to speak to. Hecate enchanted him never to reveal what I told him. It was... interesting. Frankly, my time with you has proven far more beneficial. I'm not a therapist, Apollo. I understand. And I don't mean to rely on you, only that... It makes me happy just to know you, Grace. Aw. Hmm. I mean, being amused and kind of forcing people to 
seeing their feelings would be really advantageous for a therapist. It would help um, to get people to face up to how they really feel about things and about themselves and to um, make them clarify those things to themselves. So yeah, the Muse's power would be a real asset for a therapist to have. And I mean, maybe Grace is kind of a therapist of sorts when she uses her power. I'd like to know a little more about the idols. I am one now, right? You are. What would you like to know? Well, what are we? Where did we come from? If an idol is a soul that moves from person to person, it must have started somewhere, right? The short answer is, we don't know. If I think far enough back, I can remember bits and pieces. I remember my first Pythian games, the day the idols split in two over Troy, the day my first son died. But before that, nothing. None of us do. I vaguely recall the very first Apollo many thousands of years ago, but was he the original? Did he appear out of the ether? I couldn't tell you. Hmm. Psst. Isn't it strange to not know where you come from? For all you know, the idols could be aliens. Hmm. Interesting. The notion that there might be some other place far away where we're the norm is comforting. Sadly, our memories are filled with blanks. There was a war with beings we called the Titans. A terrible conflict where half our number died, yet do I remember a single battle. The last was after Rome fell. Zeus called us together to relay the news, told us to prepare for battle, and then, in the blink of an eye, I was in the 16th century. What made us forget a thousand years? What happened during that time? <laughs> we don't know. Athena calls that period the gap. The gap you mentioned. What was that like? Did you just... I know I was alive. I passed on my idol on who knows how many times, yet the moment I woke up, as you call it, all memory of that period was gone. It was Athena who found us. I was in France, I think. She came to my farm, and the moment I laid eyes on her, I just knew. It all came back. Did someone do that to us? Did we scatter to the winds for a thousand years on purpose? It's a mystery. What about Athena? I mean, she's the one who found you, right? She must have been aware. Athena claims she awoke on her own and spent the next century locating the other idols. We've pieced together very little of the gap or of our origins. We simply live with it. Gods we may be, but I'm afraid we don't have all the answers. Hmm. Earlier you mentioned your son dying. Did I hear that right? Can idols have children? It was rare, but yes. Back in ancient times, some of them even became idols themselves. Some of the idols are actually family then? Not anymore. Most of our children met Terrible ends. A gift of the fates, perhaps. I don't know. The ones who weren't idols... It's hard... watching your children grow old and die. Never understanding why they can't have the same immortality you do, why you... can't grant it to them. 
My first son is why I'm not permitted in Hades any longer. Let's simply say that most idols have stopped having children and maybe leave it at that. Okay. Tell me more about the war. It seems to have had a huge effect on all of you. I don't think we would have left the old world otherwise. It was home. From Aphrodite's song, I know Ares betrayed everyone. What did you do? I... I caused it. I foresaw what was going to happen, so I tried to prevent it. I told Ares. I figured if the god of war couldn't stop what was to come, then... And that's why he betrayed everyone. He decided the idols were a lost cause. Because I told him we were. Surely it could have happened anyhow. It was a big war. The biggest. Perhaps. We'll never know, will we? My time afterwards was spent helping the survivors, keeping us on the move. If Hephaestus hadn't intervened, we would have all been captured. And he's... Oh, gone now, we assume, like so many others. We are nothing more than refugees from a war long over, Grace. Was it hard for the idols to come to the New World? It's just a place like any other, isn't it? I don't think it was the place so much as the condition we were in. Shell-shocked, one might say. Our entire world had been turned upside down. Suddenly, we had rules. Secrecy was paramount, and no one was permitted to leave the city. Some, like my sister Artemis, couldn't abide it. Yeah, I've heard the name. Goddess of the Hunt. <laughs> and a wild thing herself. She... She left, I think. Faded away without a word. As many did in the early days here. Huh. Later, Athena became even more strict. For our own good, of course, but it hasn't been easy. This city has never felt like home so much as a temporary shelter. Tell me more about Calliope. You and her were good friends, right? Uh, for centuries, we were far more. I was the god of the arts, and the muses were my constant companions. <laughs> we went everywhere together. They had many names, but the three most common were Cleo, Talia, and Calliope. The Sisters of Beauty, I called them, though they weren't always women. I never thought of that. Do idols change gender a lot? Most of us seek out inheritors who are like us, I suppose, but not all. Calliope, in fact, was a man in our previous incarnation. Christoph, I think his name was. A poet Calliope adored. I was surprised when she made him amuse. Who did Calliope become after that poet, Christoph? <laughs> you have to realize we're already into the period where Calliope and I weren't really speaking. She showed up one day in her new form, the, the one you met. An opera singer whose name she never revealed. We fought, as I recall. I told her she couldn't pass on every time she met an artist she fell in love with. Eventually she'd forget everything about who we were and where we came from. She said she'd rather forget than wallow in old memories like I or the other idols were doing. It was time to wake up and make the best of our situation. Calliope was an idealist without compromise. Always. She hated what we'd become. What, what I'd become. She wasn't wrong. Hmm. From how you describe it, you and Calliope fought a lot. As often as we saw each other. Which became less and less as time wore on. <laughs> However, she fought with everyone. Calliope hated the idols being kept secret. 
she and Athena would get into screaming matches over the rules, and it got... so I could no longer protect her. She moved out of Olympus years ago and kept to herself. I just assumed she was wrapped up with some new artist when... when I got the news. Do you regret not making up with her? Every day I think about our last conversation and what I should have said or done differently. The problem with immortality is that you think you have all the time in the world. It wasn't only fighting with Calliope, right? Surely there were good things, too. Is that how it sounds? No. She was marvelous. A force to be reckoned with if there ever was one. In the darkest days during the war, it was her songs that gave us hope. She kept Aphrodite alive through sheer determination, I think. <laughs> Calliope cared about us, about art, about people she'd only just met. It was her greatest strength as well as her greatest weakness. I wonder why she picked me. I don't feel like I'm any of those things. You underestimate yourself, Grace. I see a lot of her in you. She chose well. What happened to the other muses? You mentioned two others. Were they lost in the war? Cleo perished centuries before. The victim of an obsessed writer she'd spurned. He kept her in a cage as his personal muse. Ugh, that's pretty dark. It was. By the time we found her, she was already... Well, it's enough to say her captor didn't survive her for long. Talia, however, was lost to us on the very last day of the war. We were about to leave on the ship, but she just... never showed up. Do you know what happened to her? We never found out. I worried for years, even hired people to look, but... as far as I can tell, she up and vanished into smoke that day. The war had ground her down. I was upset, but... not surprised. That's all I can think of for now. I'll see you around? Of course. I look forward to it. Aww. So... That was... a bit... longer than I imagined it would be. The uh, chat with Apollo. And uh, it was um, more of a, like a story time, history and stuff. So I may actually go to Medusa's lair in the next episode and just call this one story time with Apollo or something like that. Let's look at the journal, at the new info we got there, and then... We'll go see Medusa in the next one. So yeah. Um, let's... There's not an anything new about Freddy here, but uh, I think there should be some things about Calliope now. Apollo finally told me about Calliope, how she took care of the idols during their darkest days after the war, how she was an idealist without compromise and that's what the last fight between them was about, how she was once a man named Kristoff. I really wish I'd known her better before all this happened. I guess I will someday. There's probably nothing new here, right? What about the Aphrodite entry? No. There should be new things here. Oh 
Apoya. Did you know Apollo's name used to be Lucas? Or I guess it's better to say that's the name of the person he was passed on to, which is now him. Lucas was like me until Apollo's memories came back. I'll never get used to this. Did you know Apollo once had a son? It seems so strange. I guess because the idols talk so much about being related even though they're not, I assumed that they couldn't be. They just choose not to. I guess outliving your kids is as bad as it gets, huh? I asked Apollo about what happened during the war, and he casually mentioned that it was one of his prophecies which prompted Ares to betray the idols. Ares did it because he was sure the idols were doomed anyway. Yeah, maybe prophecies are more trouble than they're worth after all. Yeah, I figured there would be some kind of a tragic story to um, why Apollo, um, doesn't like his gift or like a dislikes his gift or his power so much. And, uh, the thing with, with Ares is, is probably what's behind all of that. Apollo finally explained what Persephone's real beef with him was all about. Once, she managed to escape from the underworld with Hades hot on her heels. When she finally got to Olympus, the idol she ran into was Apollo, and he did nothing to help her. I'm trying to imagine what it would have been like to be dragged away by a smug Hades while the brother you thought would help, who had to know how desperate you were, just stood there and let it happen. Apollo had no choice, but Persephone couldn't have known that. How awful a moment that had to be for them both. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And uh, we'll start our next episode by going into Medusa's lair. If I did it in this episode, this would probably end up being even longer than the previous one was. So, um, yeah. This will be uh, the story time with Apollo episode and and uh, we'll meet Medusa next time. For now, thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. It was lovely to have you. Please remember to be kind to yourself, have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you again next time.